just wrapped up our third and final night. It was, uh, it was an incredible trip. I'm old and I've made up my mind a long time ago. <laughs> and it's hard to change somebody. This is Paul, our Uber driver. Okay, so we're, we're approaching it, right? Yeah, we're, right here is probably where I'll drop you. Yeah, that's as close as I can get. Paul, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Because I work at this store and it's... Which one? Cup food. It was this interviewee's preference not to be shown on camera. We can tell you her boss wears a 45 on the back of his belt and keeps an open case of ammo on the shelf behind him during the hours of business operation. Were you there? No. Okay. How do you? Uh, how, how about the? How about the poor young? The poor young lad. We saw him. We saw him testify. Uh, the one that called the police. He had to deal with the twenty. Do you know that young gentleman? I know him. Yes. He seemed like a nice young fellow. Yes. Yeah. He seemed a little upset. He was. Okay. Any anything you can say on behalf? Of, it doesn't have to be formally, but on Cup Foods, it seems like an interesting place. Is it open? It's a good store. It's a good store. There are good people there, you know. And then, yeah, that's about it. I can't really say much more. Hey, thank you for the time. All right, and stay safe. Thank you. You too. Truth of Mark Naughton, and we've come a long way, and we're finally here. We're here at 37th in Chicago, just one block away. From where the whole infamous uh, incident with George Floyd and the other officers, uh, specifically Derek Chauvin, he's the most visible one. He's the one with the, you know, the famous footage. And that is maybe 120 yards away. We're talking about one city block. Now, uh, the city, the city put up barriers, these Jersey barriers. The city themselves uh, blocked off the street with the amount of protesters um, and the people that were here. So now you have a unique situation. It's very unique because the people, uh, the protesters, the community, they have expanded on that. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, the signs. I've read, I've read many of them. I'm looking at the barriers. It looks like uh, they put up uh, some walls, some fencing. Even these jacks look like little kid jacks. But I'm looking at how they're made. And I do know that there's a lot of artists in this community. Came out here uh, looking to cover the Derek Chauvin trial. And of course, uh, the unfortunate events with uh, Dante Wright happened. And the city shifted and things, things, things were different. So we covered everything. We covered both. We could, but what, what did we really cover is we covered people. So we're going to, we're going to cross. We're going to cross into the, the free state. Uh, and by the way, for people that don't know, this has been formally, the city has formally changed the name of this area. This is now the, the George Perry Floyd uh, Jr. Okay? This, this is, uh, it's formally named. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to step, and we're going to enter. Okay, I see, I see what's known as an ECP, entry control point. Uh, it does not look like it's manned at this hour. If you look over there to your right, I can see the memorial set up, say their names. Those are uh, gravestones of people who the community feels very strongly about, and they think that, that those individuals were murdered at the hands of police. Uh, I believe that it's an either all or majority minority memorial. And there's a lot of gravestones there, so uh, you you be you be the judge. You decide what that's about, but that's there. Um, I see I see a lot. Uh, I see I see writing. Okay, I see uh, the the there's there's art, there's script, there's there's names everywhere. Again, we're approaching the center, and the memorials and the pictures they're here. This looks like uh, okay. So what we got here is a, is a garden. This is a garden right on the street. I'm seeing uh, fennel. I'm seeing onion. Uh, I don't. I don't see any crops yet, but it's cold. It's cold, so you know I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't. I don't know farming very well. So, um, but it looks like uh, you see. You see that? That's a trend. That's a, that's a trend. When they try to. Uh, when people try to put up uh, autonomous zones, uh, it's it's probably more symbolic than practical. But that's that's what they're doing. They want to get back to uh, get back to the earth. Get back to. Uh, a little less industry. It's a very, very common theme. So that's I do notice that. So let's 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 keep going. It has not been the same. It hasn't been the same uh, physically. It hasn't been the same emotionally. It hasn't been the same uh, governmentally. There is a lot going on here. So let's check it out. Everything happened so fast. We're moving. And I say everything. I mean the show. Uh, we moved so fast. I didn't get a chance to uh, to really describe um, kind of the show and my personal uh, position here. 
with how we present this story. So uh, again, the, the, the thing that I always say is, is I have uh, my, my feelings, I have my beliefs as you do, as you should. However, uh, how we do it differently is we're gonna present things factually, whether you like it or not factually, but we have to do it uh, in a very, very careful way because we don't want to be disrespectful, okay? So uh, the facts are the facts, and we're going to let them take us. But I want to say that, um, you know, it is never, never acceptable uh, when someone loses their life at the hands of another. And the question of justified or not justified or reasonable or unreasonable, those are questions that should be asked. Those are questions that should be had, okay? Uh, but that's not what, out, what we're out here doing, is we're getting the feelings from the people and presenting some facts. Feelings and facts, okay? So uh, that's, that's all I'd like to say is, is we're going to be respectful while we're here, of course, because we're respectful everywhere. Uh, and I just wanted to say that uh, when it comes to life, we value all life, and we don't make fun of the loss of it. So let's, let's carry on and let's, uh, let's, let's see some stuff. Facts. Facts as it happened, okay? So uh, George Floyd and his friend Mr. Hall and also a third person in, his, in, in uh, the blue Mercedes that they were driving, uh, they, parked right, they parked right exactly where that, that white SUV is, okay? Just the, maybe a few feet from it. And that's outside Dragon Walk. And they made a trip or two inside here, inside Cut Foods, which is a very local uh, location here. And uh, he had an exchange uh, with some alleged counterfeit money. I think it's been proven it's counterfeit by the U.S. Secret Service. But nonetheless, he had some incidents. Uh, he leaves the store, goes back to his vehicle. And the young gentleman, uh, the employee, he was told to deal with it. And the police were called. The police arrive. They deal uh, and they have a field interaction uh, with Mr. Floyd at his vehicle where he's apprehended. And right where those trash cans are, those two trash cans, where all, where all the, uh, the writing is, that's where he was sat down, that exact location. He was sat down there, and eventually they made the decision that he was going to be placed under arrest. And they walked him right across the street here, right down this sidewalk in front of Cup Foods. And we're going to go right here, okay? And it was right here where he was, he was placed in the back seat of the car. He worked his way out of the vehicle with, with the officers and that's where that's where he took his last breaths under his own power right there and everyone's seen the video videos now the court is showing many of the videos and that's it ladies and gentlemen right there uh, from there this is right where the ambulance pulled up it came from that way just like this car it pulled up here they immediately picked him up and they did what they described as a load and go. That's where the paramedics chose not to treat Mr. Floyd, the patient at that point, here. Instead, they took him a few blocks away, that way. And again, uh, treating him along the way, um, but, uh, well, that's it, right? They didn't treat him on the spot. See, I got to be careful with what I say. They did not treat him here. They transported him from here and treated him several blocks away. And the fire department later showed up with some miscommunication. Fire department uh, showed up to assist, except they came to this location, not the new location where Mr. Floyd and the paramedics were. So that's how you also see the fire department pull up right here. Uh, that's where the crowd stood uh, during the whole incident. And this is it. This is the spot that, that uh, millions upon millions have watched, and this is where it's at today. So as, as far as locations go, those are the three major, major locations and, and major uh, events that took place here. Now the question is, what do you do with the area? We know what's being done with it now. There's businesses here. Have they adapted? Have some suffered? Have new ones popped up? There's people who want this intersection open. There's people who want to leave it the way it is. And... Is that going to be a contention? Is that, is, do we see more contention that's going to come? All great questions, and I don't have the answers, but we're going to see it. We're going to see what happens. With the case and everything going on, you know, I ride around work listening to it as well. And, uh, of course, I work with Biff's. You see, I come do the porta potties here. It's the first time I actually stopped and got out, you know, since it happened 10, 11 months ago. And it's... um just as refreshing as you know watching the video when it first happened you know they put the body lay out there it's um 
it's hard still. And you got, I see um, Dante Wright's name out there, which is extra fresh, what, three days ago? So Brand new. We were just, we were just uh, at Brooklyn Center last night. Brooklyn Center. That's where we are. It's national news. It's the hottest location in America right now. And apparently there's a state curfew. I hear it on the loudspeaker. Everyone's phones are blowing up. Every single phone. It's like an Amber Alert, but it's a curfew alert. As locals in Minneapolis will tell you, police are nice during the day, and it is a different situation at night. I see the large crowd, which is not even 100 yards from me, and it looks like they're being pushed south. I see smoke. I hear bangs. It could be uh, flash bangs. It could be uh, tear gas. We're going to get a little closer, and we're going to see. We're going to find out. They got you? What what they get you with? Canister this time. You got hit with a canister? Yeah, I, I ain't been out here a whole 20 minutes. Uh, I'm Cortez Wright, so I'll be, you know what I mean? I'm always boots of ground. We just want justice, man. That's all we asking for. That's all we want, man. They give us justice. There ain't no point in us being out here. Just give us justice, man. Hold them cops accountable for the things that they do, man. We only human. They only human. I could be charged for it. Why they can't, why they can't be charged for it? Oh, they, they, they are charged for it. Like straight up. No, like hold them to the highest accountability because more more so y'all are trained. More so y'all. You expect more is what you're saying. Yeah, straight up. Like, it's bogus, man. Like, straight up, man. That's all we want out here is justice. Okay, hey. This is what you get, man. You get the people coming together. All we want is justice, man. So what's going to happen tonight? What about right now? Is the crowd going to stay? Is the crowd going to leave? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Crime. Yeah. Hey, thanks for your time. Yep, yeah, thanks, man. Y'all have a good one. Fuck you, you go home. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see, it's, uh, it's a little loud here. We'll go right here. So we're on Truth of Mark Naughton, and I'm here with... Jakira Tucker. Jakira, yeah. you stood out. I hear you. You're standing on your car. You have messages for the police. What is it? I feel like killing black people is not what you're supposed to do. It's not how the way you handle things. They've been killing black people for years, like Rodney King. And these people are trying to sit out here and make a difference. Rodney but, King wasn't killed. Not Rodney King, but, um, the, you know, the guy who got killed by the cops. They, back in the day when they did the riot and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, he, he was brutally beaten. Yeah, beaten. Okay. Almost killed to death. Right. George Floyd for two. They killed him. Why do they have to have a court, have court for him? I don't understand that. That's not understandable. It's on plain camera. So should he just be lynched? I feel like if it was a black person, they'll put them in jail quickly. But if it's, I'm not being racist, if it's the other color, you know, they'll try to make a, make it look like, you know, like, oh, they didn't do that. You know, like the lady who killed the, the guy the other night. The other day, she, they said, well, the chief said she was not, you know. Action's getting closer. Action's getting closer. Yeah. They, she said that she didn't do it. Well, not do it, but, you know, like, she did, it was an Yeah, she resigned today. She was meaning to do that. You think it was intentional? Yes, it's intentional. I, th I think it was intentional. It's not, it had nothing to do with color. But if it was a white person that got killed, and a Mexican, Puerto Rican, any any race who be out here tonight as well. So the, so the cops, in your opinion, are out to. Well, you well you finish the sentence. The cops, the cops are all out to what? They are out here to basically people are protesting. They making us have curfew. Why we have to have curfew? Why you just can't look at the situation and prosecute her for what she did instead of sh making excuses? That's what the problem is. Nobody see the problem. Hey. They don't see our problem. Hey, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Right. What it looks like right now is everyone's at a standstill. If you notice, the cops are also... All right, so I'm here with... You're here with Shad Cabasa. Shad? Yeah. Okay, Shad. So uh, explain to me what happened. Man, I've been here since, you know, since 9 in the morning. But uh, about 30 minutes ago, I just got shot. You know, I got actually a couple of shots. I got shot right here, as you guys can see, and right down by my leg. 
and all just for protesting. So you, you got sh you got shot in the groin? I got shot in the groin, and it hurts. Like it, it really did it, hurts. Did it hit what I think it hit? No, it hit exactly where you think it hit. No. Good guy. Okay, so you're out here protesting. Uh, was there any warning? Was there any? Did they give you any orders to disperse? What What happened? Did you just get picked out of the crowd? Were you the first one in line? What happened? I honestly, I've been here for like two days now protesting, and I'm one of the guys who like rioting and like getting everybody together. Crowded. So they, so they knew you. They, I think they've had a target on me for the last couple of days. They, they know, they know who I am. They, and they send you a message. What are you gonna do about it? You gonna you gonna heed the warning? We're here, We're here man. We're here to protest until they hear us. I mean, one shot is not gonna do anything for me. You know? Yep. Yeah. One, one shot is not gonna do anything for me. We're still here. We're still okay. Here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any predictions on where this is going? Um. I mean, for right now, what it looks like, there's probably gonna be a few arrests for the night, but still not gonna stop us from you know protesting. What happened last night? When when did it calm down? Um. I want to say right around. Uh, 9.30 when they're sending a few more sheriffs and stuff, that's when it kind of like settled down. But, you know, we were still here. We were still here until like 3, 4 in the morning, though, even though they were still, we were still here. Okay. Yep. So, uh, well, maybe we'll see you again tomorrow night. Hey, man, I, you guys are definitely going to see me here until all this shit is done, man, for real. Okay. Stay safe. This, this definitely hurts, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this shit checked out. Yeah, I feel for you. That's crazy. I would, I would definitely hit the doctor hey, first thing. Dante Wright, man. Hey, Dante Wright. Y'all have to know his name, for real. He's 20 years old, died because of air refresheners. I'm 22 years old, man, and I have a daughter, and he had a son. You know, that, that really resonates with me, really. Like, that's, that's the reason why I'm out here. Honestly. Can I ask you a straight, a straight up uh, question where, where maybe we can solve some of these problems? Can I do that? Okay. So I, I often hear, uh, and I'm being straight with you, we hear he died for an air freshener uh, or someone else, you know, died for a fake 20 or someone else died for Lucy's. And I say, and I have to say, what's the one thing they all had in common was resisting. Now, I'm not saying they deserve to die. Of course they didn't. Of course they didn't. But the question is, but can we, can we do it better and take our fights and our and our arguments to the courts we can definitely do a better job of policing and who we hire i mean just because you have a fake 20 dollar bill or we do a better job of being citizens we can do a better job of being citizens but we can definitely do a better job of who we hire because maybe both because you're wrong does not mean you deserve to die a hundred oh, yeah not deserve to yeah die definitely before. definitely I've agree wrong before yeah that don't mean I have to die because I'm wrong. 100%. You know I mean? Maybe I, mean, I might get pulled over for air refreshment. You get pulled over for air refreshment. We're not going to get the same result. I, 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 I'm I, automatically yeah. a threat. If me and you get pulled over, I'm automatically a threat just because of the skin of my color. That's yeah, it. That's, uh, that's that's where we're living, man. Yeah, and well, that's I, what we're trying to change. We're trying, we are here trying to change that. If, my, if I get pulled over, I'm getting a really, really bad result. But if you get pulled over, you're being handled like the utmost respectful citizen. That's not right. Mm -hmm. That's not right. How, how do you behave when, when you get stopped? I mean, when I get, I've been pulled over before, trust me, I put my hands up and I ask the police officer, why am I getting pulled over? And it's worked I, out for you? It's worked out for me just fine. So, uh, I, so, I so just, again, just, uh, just being straight up, it sounds like it's worked out for you. Spread that message. But let me help you help your guys let me, out. Let me ask you something. You know how many black folks have been killed? Like, this is trickling down to the black community. If you see somebody who's black who's getting killed, what makes you think you're gonna get you? What makes you think you're gonna pull over when the police officer is gonna pull you over? You're not. So it has to start from the top. If you guys stop killing us, maybe we will respect y'all. Maybe like when y'all pull us over, y'all won't have the problems that y'all having. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it's a complex problem, man. We know it. At the, at the end of the day, we have a right to live, and they're taking it away from us. Yup. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh my God! You would have got the prize. I You're did. The you're the hundredth person today. What prize? Oh, you, it's too late. This is the money. Oh, yeah. Well, you had your shot. <laughs> Look at you, you right here. Y'all asking it. about the case, ain't y'all? You want to talk about the case? Yeah, give me your thoughts. Give me so that's the beautiful thing about our show is we want your thoughts, not mine. Tell me. Oh, he said your thoughts, not mine. Yeah, I know what his thoughts is. What are my <laughs> thoughts? What are my thoughts? You said you tell me. You said <laughs> nah, I know my thoughts though. I think that you know, it was everything was on camera. So when stuff is on camera and stuff is there right in front of your face, you should see and you should automatically understand when someone is guilty or not. Cause it don't take long. When other people kill other people, it don't take long for them to convict somebody. So why is it taking so long for them to convict him? He did it, so convict them. So much is happening during the case. If 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 if, if y'all know what I mean, something just happened in Brooklyn Center. Like so much is so much is happening. 
like y'all we just we just have to get right we have to we have to pray we have to come together we can't keep killing each other because it's, it's just not right it doesn't set a good look for our children our younger kids the people who is growing up who is going to be better than us is not setting a good look at all and, and I, honestly i don't like it i don't i don't like it at all you know what i mean and i feel like at the end of the day justice should be served if you've done wrong period ain't no way around it justice should be served and that's just how I, that's how i feel well that's what i feel i oh you said you knew how i felt i feel the same exact way i couldn't i couldn't disagree with you more as far as justice goes do you think we're gonna see justice i'm honestly really not sure if we're gonna see justice. i mean i hope we do because Everybody should be put, you know, everybody who do wrong should, you know, have consequences of their actions. And sometimes it doesn't happen like that when they're in the holy system or the justice system. They just look past it. And, and, you know, the truth is the truth. They do. And I'm glad that people are starting to open their eyes and starting to see that, you know, it's, it's wrong in everything. The justice system, the government, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of wrongdoings in everything. So I'm glad that people are actually taking the time to look into that and trying to find solutions to make our world better, to make our place better, for us to live better, to be happier. You know what I mean? Because who wants to walk around knowing they finna get shot up or, you know what I'm saying, they finna be harmed on? Like, who wants to walk around thinking that? Nobody wants that. So... For us to actually sit up here and actually sit down and actually look into the system and look at what they're doing. And not only that, the system, us as, us in general as well, too. Because, you know, we are killing each other as well, too. I mean, the truth is the truth. You feel what I'm saying? I come from New Jersey. Yes. What would you like to be on? We want to hear your thoughts. Not my thoughts, your thoughts. Well, just behind you right now, right inside that building, Derek Chauvin. He's in there. What are your thoughts? As far as thoughts, I don't, I don't really have any. Uh, you, uh... Is he going to get justice? Is he going to get justice? Or are the people going to get justice? You tell me. Uh, is, is it even possible he gets a fair trial? Should he get a fair trial? Yeah. Everybody's entitled to a fair, fair trial. So the jury comes back in a week. Not guilty. Will it be a fair trial? <laughs> uh, that would be nothing un unusual. Put it like that. Because this done happened too many times, and and it's it's done festered, and when when a, a bump or a ball festers, it finally explodes. Henceforth, this is where we are. So this is the explosion. No, you ain't seen the explosion yet. Let him be found not guilty. Let him be acquitted. Let him get just ten years where he's out in seven. That's when you're going to see the explosion. You won't only see the explosion here in Minneapolis. You're going to see it all over America. Is it possible that the people can accept the jury's decision, whatever that decision may be? Hell no, the people can't take. Uh, no, no, no. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. We're tired of marching. We're tired of kneeling down praying. We're tired of it. Somebody's reign is finna come to the end. You can see it on what's going on, what's taking place. It's incredible. Like I said, I've never been to a government complex in the United States and seen it like this. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's, it's crazy. It's the times we live in. It's the times we live in. Everything that this country has done to people is catching up with them. You notice I, I didn't say people of color I'm, I'm keeping it on black people we the ones getting assaulted and killed out here forget that people of color you know we, 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 we done got up under a delusional state of mind to where that we let the government dictate who we are as people we're not African American we're not I mean I look at my birth certificate I got Negro my parents got colored. My oldest daughter, she's got black. My youngest daughter got African-American. That's four different instances. 
You got Mexican American, you got Chinese American, Korean American. Why come they don't call y'all European American? That's where your lineage is, Europe. Go ahead, what's your question, Melvin? Okay, my question to you, what does whiteness mean to you? Absolutely nothing. No, no, what, what, no I'm serious. What, what comes along with being white? Absolutely nothing. Are you being real? I'm being very real because the way I see it, and, and, and I rarely, I rarely give up my views on the show because that's not the point. The point is I want to go out and I want to talk to the people in the streets, but it's a good conversation. You're a smart man. You ask and, and I'll answer. I think that when people go around and they put people in a box, right? They can put them in a box for being black, white, male, female, rich, poor, does it attractive, unattractive. I sit there and I go... How embarrassing, how embarrassing that you stop at the first thing you see. Richard Jackson, yeah. are we going to see a fair trial for Mr. Chauvin? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's bigger than uh, Mr. Chauvin. I, I believe it's, he's a victim of circumstance. And uh, God used people from the beginning of time. He used Job to do Noah to... Paul, uh, jo David, uh, Moses, all those, every, every, all of us he used for, for uh, sometimes bloodletting. So uh, I don't think God's uh, totally really happy with things. I believe in revelations. And so I, I believe that's going to manifest itself as being a Christian, you know. And oh, if you're a Christian, who could deny revelation? It, it's, it's not going to be a, 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 a day at Disney. That's a really good question. Is he the lamb that's about to be sacrificed? I believe he's. I believe he's going to be patted on the hand. But uh, metaphorically speaking, I believe he's going to get something, but very, very, very little. That's my prayer, anyway. Okay. Yeah, it is. I, I, I I'm pulling for him. My, my PO knows I'm pulling for him. And a few people know. I podcast as well. That's another story. But. That's great. So you're pulling for him. For a slap, I uh, or or nothing at all. So what? Hey, look. So what truth you want to know? Beat the fuck out of me. What truth you want to know? Huh? So let's let's I got my old squad to see the beginning. Let's stop. No, can can we start? Can we start? Cause they doing too much. No, stop, bro. Stop. Stay. Nick. 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 Look at me. Okay, come on. We ready? We all right. All right. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want no problems, man. Go, man. Go. Go. No, capture it. Capture it. <laughs> hey, no, I don't take nothing now, man. Don't, no, stop. Yeah, they don't want to see that. Whoa, bro. They don't want to see that. They don't want to say that. What the fuck? Can we start the news? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Can we start the news? So. So what we got? I'm going to go more down so, <laughs> he's like, do you, first question, do you know that gentleman? It seems like you know him. That's my cousin. That's that's that's, cousin. Yeah, that's, that's my cousin. That's my best friend. We all go through stuff in life, you know I, what I'm I, saying? I, I can, yeah, I can see friend. that. I can that's see that. Friend. Okay, so, uh, so we're from out of town. We come here. We're, uh, it's a beautiful city. And we're very concerned for you guys. We, we've traveled all the Can way I from Philly. Well, absolutely. Go ahead. What, what would, uh, first of all, what's your name? So my name is uh, Michaela. Okay, Michaela. Let's go. What are your thoughts? So my uh, thoughts is that whole time they killing us motherfucking black people and I don't get no fuck because I really want ones. Can I say um, bro. Um, My name is Kiki and I just want to say that... Um, well, it's really sad because they kill all these black people and then the white motherfuckers get mad that we stealing from them. Like, y'all stealing our people and all we are doing is stealing objects. And the fact that y'all getting mad over that little, them little ass $30 objects that we're stealing is sad as fuck. Did you, did you know that the, the, owner and the, the, the owner of Target is black? We ain't loot Target now. See, that bitch still full. We love Target. I just made that up. Wow, we still love Target though. This my spot. Can I talk? Can I talk? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. This is weird. What's going on? It's all weird. You know, I don't really like it. But at the same time, it's like he was in the wrong. He killed that man. He was in the wrong. And they're going to fuck female. the city up again. They fucked up for George Floyd. And at, and black he killed black him black 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 with his life. knee. So at this point, it's like they're gonna fuck the bitch move. They're gonna fuck the city up. Like, is it is it okay to to screw the city up, mess the city up? No, it's not okay. It's not okay. We purse valid. It's not okay, but our reason is valid. It's not okay. 
But, I mean, the city is mad. In, in order for us to... We got Justin for George Floyd, not all the way, but we had got some. You know, he's still in jail right now as we speak. They don't let him out the week after. So he in jail right now. We got some. But we're fighting for that full justice. That's why the trial's going on. And that's why there's protests again. If we don't get it, it's going to be a riot. People just want to be heard. That's what it really is. And we haven't been heard yet. It's been happening for years. Let me say and we something. haven't been hurt yet. The fact they killed Dante over an air freshener. So uh, I, you hear that? You hear that a lot. And and I. Come on, man. All I got no cap. All I gotta say is R.I.P. Dante. No cap. Shorty should have known where her side her taser is on, what side her gun on. There's a gun sound and there's a taser sound. Whole time, some of these cops, no cap, is carrying guns when they're not supposed to. They're just giving them them for the shit that we're doing. You think we, think we should raise the standards for cops? I think... Yo, I think that y'all should... Them cops should not be scared over some skin color. Everybody um, nice bleed. Everybody bleed. Y'all should not be scared over some skin color. That shit whack as fuck. And um, I just feel like there's ways. If y'all felt like he was going to do something, y'all have a taser. Y'all have pepper spray. Y'all ain't need to kill him. Well, that's the thing. She she thought she had her taser. And then it, when it went bang and didn't go zap, she she well, she really. She's going to get fired since she don't know what the fuck. She resigned today. You're, these, got, these officers are supposed to be tra trained to protect, not trained to kill. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Y'all have a Any final thoughts? I think you could tell the difference from a taser to from a gun. The following morning, our Uber driver, Paul, took us to George Floyd Square. There are certain people that go there every day. Okay. And they're kind of, I don't know if you want to call them security, but they kind of maintain order. They're not, you know, any official capacity, but... <laughs> Okay, a little out of breath because we just sprinted to our Uber. Uh, gentlemen, arrived right on time, right where we said. So uh, what happened was we uh, we were flying our aircraft. We have a very good drone, we're flying our drone. We had FAA approval for the area, uh, all legitimate flights, okay? We don't mess around here. So <clears throat> we're flying it and as we know, it is an autonomous zone. So they recognized us in our, in, as they see it, their airspace. They were not happy with that, <clears throat> and they uh, attempted to hustle us and strong arm us for it started at four hundred dollars. It started at four hundred. This is why the aircraft's in the air, and uh, and then it escalated um, because then they just wanted the aircraft itself once they saw it. So uh, so I used some invasive maneuvers with the aircraft, put it high, um, and uh, my cameraman and producer Nick he uh, he used. He used some very good de-escalating tactics, but even more importantly, he, de he delayed and distracted. I was able to collect our equipment while he distracted. Um, and then once, so the threatening part was that him and his passenger, they, they then got out of the car and they started to uh, call for reinforcements. So some of their local authorities, I don't know what they're enforcing. I don't know the, the laws of their, their sovereign territory, but they decided that they uh, wanted to seize the aircraft and impound it for just 24 hours while they had a chance to uh, search it. Um, and I told them, okay, okay, uh, when, when that was not okay. And once we had everything packed and once we appeared as though that we were going to comply with, with their demands, they went back in their car, which we took advantage of. And we uh, ran to Cup Foods and where we uh, made our escape. So that's it. Um, we're probably not going to be flying that location again. They made it clear their intent uh, that they will protect their uh, their airspace with force. So uh, hopefully we got some good footage. We only had one pass. We could only do one pass before we were uh, contacted by, uh, I guess, is their Air Force. We were warmly welcomed in the home of Sasha Cotton, Minneapolis Director of Violence Prevention, for a quick interview. My understanding is the Office of Violence Prevention is, is, a, is a newer concept. It's not as old as, let's say, uh, what people will compare to is, is the police. Absolutely. Um, you know, we are new, particularly Minneapolis. We've only been up and operational for just under two years. We were developed uh, by the city's ordinance and budget uh, at the January 1st of 2019. So by budget process in 2018, 
but our work officially began uh, under the Office of Violence Prevention in 2019. Prior to that, our work existed in a different division, so we were focused on adolescent health and youth development, but you're absolutely right. I've been making that comparison for quite some time, that uh, the institution of policing here in Minneapolis has existed for 154 years. And so, um, you know, we've got some, some catching up to do, but we certainly think about our work as a part of an ecosystem focused on public safety, not an either or methodology. We have a project manager who is focused on the intersection of 38th and Chicago, also known as George Floyd Square. So really managing the city's relationships at the square, evaluating how, if, when a reopening will be possible, um, engaging in the relationships with businesses there to ensure that to the best of our, our possibility, the city is aware of the needs and concerns of those businesses on the ground. I'm a family man. It's, it's COVID time. You've invited me into your home. So, uh, you know, the people are going to know you're, you're a family woman and, and that's how it is. So no, no need to apologize. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking you mentioned, you mentioned George Floyd Square and, uh, before we came out, we, we did as much open source information research as we could. We didn't actually get to speak with anybody from the area, but, uh, we reviewed the footage. We've seen several media people, I'm sure you're aware, they, they try to go in, they try to cover the area. You know, it is, uh, supposed to be an American street and with that comes all rights and privileges. And, uh, unfortunately we've, we've, I've seen multiple times, uh, the media, get pushed out of there. Um, is that a problem your office is aware of? It is. It is a problem that we are aware of. It is the newest position that we've developed in our office for that very reason. Uh, we recognize that city streets should be governed as public entities. And right now, um, that is a challenge for our city. And so uh, while we grapple with what the law enforcement response might look like, because we are not law enforcement, we are really working on the community side of a public safety strategy to try to come up with ways to partner with those who are at the intersection. You let us in on uh, some of your operations or progress with that, with that area? You know, it is absolutely challenging. Um, there is no question that the folks who are there have been there for a very long time and have deep investments in um, what I think they would say is a black liberation movement um, to keep that intersection closed while they have this list of 24 demands. I read the demands. Right. And so um, I will not speak on behalf of the mayor or our elected officials. It is really ultimately their decision to decide how to engage in and proceed in a reopening or Advising. reconnection. But we are absolutely advising them on the will and want of the people at the intersection. And I think overwhelmingly what we've heard from the business owners and the residents and the faith community that are at that intersection is that the best thing for them is a full reconnection and a full uh, integration and maintenance of that intersection. Open it up is as what I'm hearing. a public space, because it is a public space. Right. So it should be treated as a public space. I was there yesterday. I was there. Um, I'm, you know, you're aware of me. I'm, I'm in the media at this point, and uh, we were there, and the people were very warm. The businesses were very warm. We spoke to residents. We spoke to people who visit. We spoke to workers, and we were we were met with uh, nothing but warmth and open arms, and we felt it was a very nice place. In fact, we felt so comfortable enough that we flew our drone, our aircraft, which, by the way, uh, fully licensed. And uh, we saw FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, approval to fly the area. We got approval. So as far as all American rights and privileges, we were allowed to be there. We were allowed to fly it. And we flew it. And we were, in, uh, we were challenged by some locals. I assume they're locals. I don't know if they're from anywhere. But they had local tags on their vehicle. And uh, we were threatened. We were threatened very significantly. And it was, uh, it was a very hostile situation. And if it, but for the fact that we were experiencing the escalation, uh, but it could have went any which way. It could have, it could have went very ugly, and and uh, we were able to escape using de escalation. And honestly, we tricked them. We tricked them on our way out, which we had no other options other than that and fight. So it was very dangerous, and I, you know I have to I have to bring that to you yeah, because totally. because while I don't know the time frame that you guys uh, or the mayor or the city is trying to figure this out. But there's been homicides there. There's been a pregnant homicide. This stuff is happening. And with all respect, all I hear is plans, plans, options, ideas. Well, people are dying. I fully agree with you. 
uh, you and I see eye to eye on this matter, certainly uh, as a non-elected official, but a city you know, staff person, uh, our position is that it is a public safety concern to keep that intersection closed. And the things that you report are not, unfortunately, they are not um, pieces of information that we have not been told before. And so as, as, I, as I shared with you before, as a non-elected official and a non-law enforcement person, uh, my ability to make any changes there are um, limited. What do you recommend to a victim of, of an incident like that? Well, at this point, I am very cautious about encouraging people to visit the square um, for the very reasons that you have listed. Um, I think that there's great beauty there. As you mentioned, there are wonderful businesses there. There's artwork there. Obviously, um, there is hollow ground there based on the experiences that people have had and the, the loss of life there um, of Mr. Floyd. That being said, I think that um, there need to be changes that allow for public safety measures to be taken, for ambulatory services to return to that area. Um, you know, we want it to be utilized as any other public street. And that is the will of the people that I've engaged with. And so those are the recommendations that I offer to our elected officials stem from what we hear from the people. And that is what we hear from the people. I do just want to go back, uh, back to that for a minute because um, uh, with it's, it's described as an autonomous zone. Would you agree to that? The city's official position is that it is not an autonomous zone. Uh, there are still city services being provided at the square. Such as? Uh, public works is still very Some much involved. Water, water uh, street cleaning, snow removal. Uh, you know, so I don't work for a multitude of departments. My position is housed in the public health department, so I can't sure. necessarily okay. say we do. Public health does provide resources there. You know, there is. COVID testing that happens and there are porta potties and other things that are out in that space. But police services? I would defer that question to our chief of police. Yeah, oh, well, I, I think that's uh, telling it, <laughs> that we, if, if, if it's telling that we don't know if there's police services there or not. My, my, you know, my understanding was in, in that moment, uh, there was no way I could call the police. And I certainly would have a hard time explaining to them why I need them at that second. And, and uh, so, so I, you know, we had such a sense of, of being completely on our own um, that it was, it was very, it was very stressful. It, it sounds like a very problematic experience that you described. And I um, certainly as a city staffer uh, empathize and ha I have been there and um, yeah, there, the change is needed. You know, I was prepared for basically anything within reason and Maybe we didn't see quite as crazy as I expected. I'm familiar with Antifa. I have a friend that was gobbled up by a mob of Antifa in Portland. We didn't get gobbled up, but um, there were resistors to the free press that we encountered in the autonomous zone, and they felt like we shouldn't be there. Maybe we shouldn't be there at all. I've seen, you know, concern with just a camera. Their concern with us was with the drone. We were able to defuse the situation and we got out of there quite uh, safely with the help of the International Embassy of Cup Foods and the Uber uh, organization. Thank you guys for all that you do. Oh, I should be filming this? Yeah, you might want to. <laughs> yep, so. This is Brielle, our tour guide. She's also Mobley, our marketing guy's best friend from second grade. Oh, and she's also Sasha Cotton's sister. We are in Crystal at a school called North Educational Center, the parking lot. Okay, so for people who don't know, we are very close to uh, Brooklyn Center, am I right? Yes, sir. Which is just down the street from Minneapolis, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're out of school, you're in education. The question that, that I keep raising is, uh, educating these cops is is that is that what we need to educate them more I think cops need to be educated it's a school and I, I'm sitting here and I keep talking about it what about you can call what you want but I came up with uh, with uh, justice education you learn your rights you learn your first second third. You learn, you learn all your rights okay which include the fourth which include the fifth okay so and also how to conduct yourself in the presence of law enforcement what are your thoughts so 
My thoughts are there's a double standard when it comes to the way police are seen and the way black men are seen in particular. Police are treated like superheroes and capable of doing wrong, not like regular people like you and I. Who are I think that's the case right now. Exactly. No, do you think they're treated like superheroes right now? Yeah, they are because... George Floyd is on trial, not Derek Chauvin. We can bring up George Floyd's drug addict addiction. We can bring up George Floyd's past police body cams, but we can't bring up the 15 incidents that Derek Chauvin was involved in. We can't bring up the fact that those two worked in a nightclub together, and the owner of that nightclub has verified that he hated working on Black Night. So, yeah, I do think there's a double standard. And as far as, like, the black response, if people came in your neighborhood with guns, they were disrespectful to you, they treated you with aggression for no reason, wouldn't you panic? My daughter has anxiety disorder. So some of these rationales of, oh, if he would have just listened, he'd be alive. So if my daughter gets pulled over and she has an anxiety attack and she doesn't want to get in the cop car, does that give someone a right to kill my daughter? And if they did, it wouldn't be she should have listened. Because my daughter's mixed race and her skin color is close to yours. So she would hold a different value in this country than you do. Well, it's uh, it's it's not an unpopular uh, viewpoint you have. Okay, there there are people. There's other people like you that take this position. Um, so, uh, again, I just I guess I was, I'll try to be a little more specific with with the question. I'm looking for an answer. Would you support justice education where it's like I said, it's all your rights. I think you agree that right, all your rights. For sure. Yeah. Okay. And I totally would support it. I mean, that's something that I advocate for in here every day is not to suppress our black students and to make the curriculum more specific to them and more engaging for them. And I know for a fact that would be something they'd be interested in because there's not a black student in this building who's not thinking about these people on this mask because they know that any day we get stopped by the wrong car, we could end up being on a mask. How are you enslaved by the system? Do I have the same privileges and rights as you? When we go- it does two different things, when but- When we go into a uh, interview and we have the same education and they can pay you more than they pay me for the same experience. Same so, you, so you have a school right here. You're telling me that some people are paid differently for the color of their skin? Y-E-S. I hope for your case or any other defendant in this school district that if that is the case. I love my school district. Uh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I let but you talk. At the same time, there is inequalities in here. Okay. Well, you just told me mm -hmm. that people in your school are paid differently based upon the color of their skin. And I'm, and, and if I let you speak, so, and if they are, I highly encourage you to make that an issue. And I highly encourage you to take that to a federal court for a civil rights violation mm -hmm. and you will probably never have to work again i'm sure but the issue is not with the school right now the that seems like that an I issue have, the issue that i have is with this country as a whole with the police killing black men and women at this rampant pace that's the issue i have that's certainly an issue there's no no doubt in that correct any other final thoughts? No, I just want justice to happen in these situations. Yeah. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Do a very rare thing because you approached us and, and uh, we, I've asked a lot of questions. So you said you have a question for me or us. Go ahead. Well, the question is, is not the laws, it's the people who uh, perpetrate the laws. Uh, you know, I've been here a long time. I mean, I, we got a lot of great police officers. A lot of my friends are officers and all kind of stuff. But I think what we don't realize is the interaction on how they treat certain people when they pull up mobile or when they uh, have to stop them and why they stop them. So this is, uh, this, this, it sounds like you are convinced this is not a training issue. This is not a policy issue. It sounds like you're saying that this was uh, personal. I'm saying it was personal. And I'm saying they all was personal. And I done seen it too many times in the city. I thought you was on your phone. Seb, thanks for your time. Thank you. Give me a call. Y'all can get a shirt too if you want to. Road is closed, is apparently. Right? No. <laughs> yes. Road closed. It is closed. What time is it? Oh, look at the <laughs> mobile news truck over here. No, it's just a speaker. This woman's praying. That's nice. Yeah. Put prayer on the situation.
camera guy, Nick, but I think I'd be pretty good. What do you guys think? Behind the scenes, I'd be pretty good. Yeah. You just gotta know how to push the red button, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the big deal is. Everyone has two cameras in their pocket at all times. Right. Basically just as good as my camera, slight differences. So Mark, is that an autonomous zone we drove through there? No. Will it not become yet. one? No, right now right now it's just that's that's clearly an area where people are are protesting. They're protesting yeah. and and the government is uh, defending government property. That's that's exactly what it is. Now there was a sign that said road road closed. Could you speak to it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw it. Uh, everyone's driving around it. It didn't seem to be enforced. I don't know if that sign was just placed there. Or who placed it there? We don't know. You know, it could have been somebody in the crowd that just dragged it out there trying to get it started. I don't know. I'm fighting for my rights. Uh, absolutely. And why are you fighting for your rights? I'm fighting so all the black people can stop getting killed for no reason. And what happened to you? I was four years old in the back of a cop car because the racist cop killed my stepdad. Yeah. And who was your stepdad? Philando Castile. The guy's not crocheting somewhere. He's serious. And he's taking off. He's taking off on people. You know, anybody that's really in, in the Christianity know they're a little eerie. They sometimes even want to talk about the revelation. They don't want to see that, that that's going to happen. But yeah, I believe God, uh, that was God's doing. I believe a lot of the African Americans, when they're killed, they, uh, they're, they're doing something wrong, breaking the law. Then you don't want, hey, don't touch me. Get your hands off me. D don't, don't talk to me. Don't. Matter of fact, I'm going to get in my car and drive off. You know, it's it's as very interesting you you say that because I sit here and I go, uh, it's not okay that people die. It's not okay that people die at the hands of the police. We should avoid it at all costs. But the one thing, right, wrong, or indifferent, right or wrong, it's usually non-compliance. It's you. The ninety something for upwards of ninety percent. I speak on that. Yeah, I said justice for Jesus, not George Floyd. Hey, look what happened two days ago. This this poor gentleman, uh, you know, uh, Dante Wright. He's a very young guy. He has a child. And Bad I, choices. And I sit there and I go, you know, it, you have to wonder. Uh, he resisted, Sir, and he resisted. In the worst way. And I'm astonished. Right. I'll never get. I'll tell my grandkids about it. How he would maneuver to get back in the car. I've been asking my guys, where was he going? Where are you going, man? That's how you feel about the law? Hi, I'm Mobley from Mobley Marketing 19 here with Mark Naughton, The Truth with Mark Naughton. I'm host of The Truth with Mark Naughton. How are you today, Mark? I'm great. I feel fantastic. Okay, now um, we came out to Minneapolis Tuesday. Uh, share with the viewers your experience so far. Um, you know, how has this experience been covering the George Floyd trial and you know all the interviews you have done. Oh, well, it, was, it, was, it was pretty incredible. We came out here with the intent to cover uh, the, uh, the historic, uh, very high-profile case of uh, Derek Chauvin. Uh, of course, the untimely events with with uh, Dante Wright uh, just re-fired up this town, uh, for lack of a better term. And uh, the people were out. They were out protesting. Uh, they they wanted their voices heard. And uh, there's, there's, there was a lot, a lot of opinions to be had, and I was blown away by how open the people were. They want their opinions out there, they want their feelings out there, and that's what we did, we got it, but we didn't throw softballs. We ask very tough questions because uh, to find the truth, which is what we're all about, you have yes. to ask the tough questions to get the tough answers. As you should, absolutely. Now you actually covered um, the autonomous zone. Um, <clears throat> how was your experience and you know, what can you share with the viewers on um, you physically being in the autonomous zone in Minneapolis? Autonomous zones, I'm here to tell you from, from now my experience, uh, are very dangerous, extremely dangerous. Uh, it's all peace, love, everything looks great, and the people are great. The challenge comes in is there's no standards, there's no laws, it's lawlessness, which means everything is peachy until it's not, until wow. somebody's offended, mm -hmm. 
And there's no, there's no uh, group identity, there's no community identity. Everyone is on their own program. Wow. So what happens is we're out there, everyone's happy, everyone loves us until someone didn't. Mm. And then there was no recourse, it's right. you're in violation. And we were threatened. It was crazy. Now, question because um, you know I was familiar with the um, wording of the autonomous zone, but really didn't look into the definition. So as you're explaining, it's very um, dangerous. So you wouldn't recommend anyone visiting this area, I take it. Not if they like freedom. Wow. Because because with freedom you risk offending people. Mm. And we were fine with what we did until we put an aircraft in the air and someone was offended by that act. Wow. And it, it, an act in and of itself that most people wouldn't find offensive, someone did. And instead of it being we talk about it or we don't, it turned to threats and violence. Wow. I'm glad that you, um, you know, and Nick made it out safely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mostly. I'm unable to share too. this story today. Yes. Yeah. So um, tell everyone about, um, you know, what's to come with the truth with Mark Knoll. And um, I know we have a documentary that's going to be coming out. Um, you have your Instagram page, the truth with Mark Knoll and your Facebook page, the truth with Mark Knoll and Twitter. Yes, Twitter, Mark Naughton 9. Uh, that's, okay. that's me. That's, that's me direct. So, okay, and um, the YouTube channel as well. Um, that's really exploding. So um, I'm excited for you. I'm, you know, happy to be a part and working with you. And, um, you know, stay tuned, guys. You definitely have some great things coming from The Truth with Mark Naughton. And this is Mobley from Mobley Marketing 19. We're out. <laughs> Thank you, Mobley. <Mobley. laughs> The only way to help get rid of the situation is, you know, come to the table and talk about it. Talk to your kids, talk to your neighbors. We should all be on the same page. We're Americans. If we, if we say this is the greatest place in the world, I can't tell America. I can't tell. I can't tell. But I love America, but we got to do better. Deuces, I'm out. You may notice that Mark was unable to interview any white people in this documentary. Here's his attempts at interviewing a few, which were non-compliant. How's the state of the city? It's great. Is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. so we've come out to the mighty Mississippi River, uh, trying to get some thoughts from the people in this area, and some very crazy things. I brought to you earlier on this trip where I said everyone's extremely open. Not in this area. This area is, we try to speak to... Well, it just happens, it's just a fact. We've seen a lot of white people. It's just a fact. We try to talk to them. Everyone's interested until they hear the topic. They're terrified. They're terrified to talk. They're terrified to give their opinion. And how do I know this? Because this is what we do now. And we talk to people. They want to be on the show. They're excited, especially, especially the girls. The girls are extremely excited to talk. And then all of a sudden I say state of affairs, talk about your city. They're good. So it's uh, very interesting. My team leaves here with a very new perspective. If you want the truth, you have to go seek it, okay? You gotta ask the tough questions to get the tough answers. And that's what we're gonna do, that's what we're gonna keep doing. So if you like what you saw, or you didn't, leave a comment, you know, uh, like, share, subscribe, you know, the whole deal. But uh, if you want us traveling, if you want us going to the hottest locations in America, maybe the world, but we'll start with America, okay? If that's what you want, as you know, we were in danger, we were in harm's way. I have the greatest team there is, uh, and support us, okay? So uh, we have a GoFundMe, and it's Truth with Mark Naughton. So again, if you want more of this, if you want more of the truth, go there. Thanks. Have a good one. Are you ready? No, I'm okay. Oh, my God. Everyone's scared.